What's up, everybody? Welcome back to RimWorld. I thought I'd do another episode. Um, I probably would have done one earlier today if it wasn't for a uh, the uh, Madison Square Garden Trump rally. So I just got done finishing watching that. Man, it was something. It was insane because, I mean, I knew it was going to be big, but I, I didn't... I don't know if I necessarily thought it was going to be as big as it was because the not only was the entire arena completely standing room only, I mean, it was just absolutely packed, but they also had a sea of people outside too. And it's, I mean, like I said earlier in another, in another video that I uploaded earlier today, I'm absolutely a Trump supporter. Of, I'm definitely MAGA, you know? And I, I kind of tried to clarify in my last video that despite the fact that I'm a MAGA supporter, I'm, I'm <clears throat> I don't want to come across as if I'm one of those kinds of guys that, you know, oh my God, you're a Democrat, you know, F you or any of that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, I'll say up front that I, I completely disagree with about, well, I don't know how much, but it's definitely a substantial amount of the Democratic platform right now as they are. Because, you know, to give you a little bit of a background about me, I actually grew up in a blue family. Uh, my, I don't, I don't know if it's really that union workers are Democrat or not. I mean, I think back in the day they probably were. I don't know if it's like that nowadays, but the majority of my family were union workers. My, my grandparents were, uh, you know, old school farmers. And I know that, that that carried a lot of weight with the majority of of things that we were kind of raised with as, as children in, in our family. But it's kind of, with me, I've, I, ha I haven't really looked at myself as anything that's remotely close to being a Democrat for years. I mean, I think the last time I came close to looking at myself as if I was a Democrat was back when Barack Obama was was running his campaign to get elected for the first time. And I say that because back then I was still, and again, I don't, I don't want to like generalize Democrats or anybody really. I, I know, I know, how, I know what it feels like to feel as if people generalize, generalize me because I'm a pro mega person. So I don't want to do that to anybody, but when Obama was running become elected for the first time, you know, first first uh, black man to be our president and stuff. I remember listening in on some of his uh, speeches and stuff, <clears throat> and I was actually pretty damned excited for the man. I mean, I he came across as, you know, super charismatic. And, you know, back then, being a college kid and stuff, you don't really have a whole, you, you don't really have a very good view of the world you don't have a lot of experience with things. You, you haven't seen humanity's real, uh, real side of stuff, I guess. So you tend to have a myopic way of interpreting things about people and about about world events and things. And and back then it was definitely applicable to me because you know I was I was an an impressionable type of college kid like most college kids are and I, I remember listening to, to Barack Obama speak and stuff and, and thinking to myself man that's gonna he's gonna be a kick-ass president and in many ways I think he really was but I remember the time though that I became I don't know if the word is disaffected or not but he the, the first time that I ha began to have problems and suspicions about the man was actually when his White House released some sort of study that I think they did at the time concerning things pertaining to automation. Because I remember during that time, this was back in, well, I don't want to say what year because I, I can't remember when this was. But his administration did some sort of study or something about automation and they released it because back in this specific timeline, automation was beginning to make rounds in our country 
because of everyone's fear of it. <clears throat> and in many ways, a lot of it has been justified. You know, obviously it goes without saying that whenever you automate a lot of stuff, there's going to be a lot of livelihoods that are going to be, be threatened by a lot of that. And me working in IT, it's not really much different for me either, despite the fact that half the time I'm the kind of guy that's usually involved in automating things that cause a lot of the, the fear that we're kind of talking about here. <clears throat> but at the time, I remember the, the thing that they released, it, it, it just kind of seemed as if they tried to paint a picture about automation that wasn't really legitimate and, and truthful because again with me being in IT I have a lot of experience with that so there were a lot of pieces in that in that article that I'm talking about that study whatever it was that I'm remembering or kind of remembering I, I remember reading a lot of that and being able to kind of pick it apart with some of my background and experience in a lot of those things and the way it came across to me at the time at least was that it seemed as if they were trying to kind of sway people into blindly embracing it and I didn't like that because it was during the time when things like self-driving vehicles were becoming uh, they, they were a, a major centerpiece in, in discourse you know there, it was during the time when a lot of people were beginning to float ideas about universal basic income and a lot of these kinds of things that I personally believe are rather dystopian than they are anything else because a lot of it seem a lot of the people that are pro those things tend to kind of gloss over the the ugly sides of them and out of all the years of experience that i've had in not only some of the stuff that pertains to the technologies that are used in those things but also in my own just kind of observations of of these things being discussed in media and you know just some of my own general research and whatnot it seems as if whenever you wind up in these kinds of situations where that kind of discourse comes up and you wind up reading things coming from people on things like Reddit and whatnot who are pro those things, if you look deep and hard enough, nine times out of ten, there's usually a money trail that tells you that the people that are pro those things have a dog in that fight. Now, I'm not going to say it's like that for every single time, you know, and, and it goes without saying, too, that a lot of that stuff, it does have legitimate... Uh, benefits to society like for example with self-driving cars i think it's amazing for people who who have disabilities who would otherwise not be able to have transportation you know things like that but whenever you start blindly pushing stuff like that i think that's i think that's when you run into problems so anyway back to the main subject here and i'm going to try to you know speed through this as much as i can when when obama in his administration published that thing, I remember reading some of that stuff and thinking to myself how it felt as if at the time they were trying to just kind of push that stuff on the people. Now, I'm not sitting here trying to say that Obama's a bad person or anything like that, and I know that people that are, you know, pro-Trump, at least the extreme wing of the pro-Trump people, they have the tendency of looking at Obama as if he was a, kind of a, a really bad, corrupt type of politician. Who knows? You know, I mean, the same could be said about Trump. I don't, I don't freaking know any of these people, and in all likelihood, the, anyone who's listening in on my my sermon here, they probably haven't met those people too. So, I, 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 I at least want to believe that the people that are like that, who get into politics and stuff, I, I want to believe that they've got a good heart and that they mean well, and that, uh, that you know, things like the media and stuff. They make them seem like people that they actually aren't. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, what the hell do I know? I'm just some kid that's out in the middle of Nowheresville who's got an opinion like everyone else. I say kid, I'm more of a... I'm in my 40s, so I can't really say I'm a kid. But, but you get the point, man. I mean, it's like, it's easy to sit back and judge anyone, really, from a distance. Now, with that being said, I've, I've fallen in love with the Trump and MAGA stuff simply because it, it appeals most to the way I think the country should be ran. <clears throat> and I'm only saying that because I think that we've kind of lost track of the basics because you you wake up each day, you read about all these weird things that are going on all across the country with things like, you know, men using girls' restrooms and gas engines being banned 
you know, and all this this weird shit. It's like none of, none of it seems like it's like it really is like anywhere close to being within a mile of how things should be ran, you know. And and I'm not gonna sit here and try to embellish this concept that groceries are unaffordable nowadays where I am at least because where I am and, and the things that I do for my career I make more than enough money to be able to get by I mean I'm able to save up a pretty substantial amount of money each month and I'm trying to use everything I can to pay this house off that I've been living in so that various kinds of doors can open up for me and maybe one day get either a new job and move move away or I don't know you know I'm just trying to do what I can with the means that I've got but with that being said I mean Despite the fact that I feel like I'm pretty well off compared to most people, I'm not stupid and I see what's going on with the groceries because they are more. They there's no doubt that they are more expensive. Now, is that is that Biden or Kamala's fault? <clears throat> Who knows, man. I mean, these things are just so complex and they've got so many moving parts that it's really difficult to really pinpoint it on like one single person or even an entire administration. But I do know this. I do know that whenever Trump was in office and comparing my first-hand experiences with that to what we have today, I'm telling you, man, it was 10 times better for me, at least, when Trump was in office. I mean, things were more affordable. Everything was just so much better, it seemed. Now, I'm sure there's people out there that obviously disagree, and if they do, you know, more power to them. They're entitled to their own opinions. But I just know that, you know, we're in kind of a unique situation in this country right now where we can have firsthand compare and contrast experience with both candidates, or at least for the most part we can. I mean, the whole thing between Kamala and Biden and how everything kind of evolved like that, that's, in my mind, there's there's just some stuff there that's not adding up. It's a little strange. And I can honestly, I, I feel like I can say with a pretty strong assurance that watching the entire Biden administration change how it has and and how it's done the things that it's done a lot of it just doesn't make any sense and whenever something doesn't make sense I mean I consider myself a pretty intelligent person I'm not going to sit here and try to make myself out to be someone that he's not but I, I do believe that I've got a pretty substantial amount of intelligence to my name and it's been my experience that in situations where something just doesn't add up nine times out of 10, it's because somebody's trying to withhold things or conceal stuff. And in those situations, the parties that play a part are, are, are almost always people that I never trust. And when it comes to the, the entire Biden slash Kamala administration, I do not trust them at all. And I will never trust them. <clears throat> so now I don't know what really happened in 2020. I am a firm believer that there was some weird shit that went down and I'm not, I don't know if it was enough to sway the election or not, because one thing I know for a fact that with, with the MAGA supporters, they have the tendency of having some tunnel vision. I think sometimes whenever it involves the considerations about the number of, of Democrat supporters or Democrat loyalists that there are in the country. I've always been a firm believer that the MAGA people are just simply outnumbered. Now, with that being said, though, I don't know, I don't know what happened with 2020 in terms of whether or not what happened then was actually a result of, of cheating, like Trump loves to say, you know, or if it was a result of simply having enough support to get someone like Biden elected. <clears throat> but I do believe, 100% believe that there was cheating involved. You'll never convince me otherwise. Just the weird shit that happened then. The the 2 or 3 a.m. ballot drops. The weird shit that was uh, processed in court or, or that they tried to process in court for the cases that didn't get shut out with no standing. The stuff with uh, Carrie Lake and the things that she brought, uh, uh, brought up in court. All of the stuff with the printers and the weird uh, coincidences about the red voting places being uh, falling victim more so to things like sporadic outages than the other places that most of the Democrats were voting in. 
I mean, you can say what you want about it, and like I said, everyone has their their right to their own opinion. But I mean, it's just there's just too much weird stuff that was going on, especially with with the whole stuff that went down with COVID too, and and how I think a lot of that stuff was exploited to to push mail-in ballots and all of this stuff. And and I mean, I'm as somebody who works in IT and whose specialization is actually in website user interface development and inter internet media delivery um i know for i know firsthand how easy it is to fuck shit up the moment you have more more numbers of people involved in processes that's the reason they always tell you in it 101 that whenever it comes to sanitizing input that's been submitted by users to never ever trust any of it. That's the reason you always think see things in like computer code where you're you're doing weird things like you know checking string length or you know checking for data types and all of this stuff that you learn about whenever you whenever you're learning how to program things. You've got to do that kind of stuff to make sure that the stuff that's being submitted isn't going against certain kinds of rules and stuff. And so whenever you you Whenever you in involve more people in the processes, you increase the numbers of points of failure. And so with the cold COVID stuff that went down, that increased the numbers of that, that that increased the numbers of people that were involved in handling things, which meant that the points of failure increased. And you will never ever convince me that there weren't people that were taking full advantage of that. Now, again, back to the main point was it enough to really sway 2020 or not? I don't think anybody will ever know that. But I but I know this much. If it's enough to create situations that merit court processes and to such an extent that a number of them have to be dismissed by things like no standing, that to me at least says that there's something weird going on that needs to be looked at. And the oddity is that a number of those, those judges that dismiss the cases with no standing just so happen to be democratic supporters or democrat supporters so you make make of that what you will man i don't, I don't like i said i'm just a dude that's out here in the midwest so what the hell do i know <clears throat> but i know who it is that i'm supporting man and i'm definitely on the trump train so <laughs> you know to each their own but the reason i was bringing all this up and this this is where i'll end it the reason i was bringing all this up man is because i just because i'm a maga supporter I don't want anybody that happens to come across my videos to sit there and, and feel like they're unwelcomed if they're if they happen to you know vote for Kamala or anybody else. I and and I'm not trying to be holier than thou because man, if you look at my comments and shit on the internet and stuff, you'll realize that I can be just as much of a dickhead as anyone else can be. But in in most situations, whenever I am a prick, it's only because I get attacked first. You know, the moment somebody starts attacking me is the moment that 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 jerk comes out of his cage and starts saying saying mean things or becomes dismissive or just whatever and and it's all it is man is just a defense mechanism I, I, don't, I don't like being mean to people and you know i want us all to be americans and be safe and and have a good life and like i said earlier man that's the reason that i'm supporting trump is because to me he he represents the best possibility of acquiring that even if it's only four four years with him you know with his his potential term that's coming up so who knows what's going to happen um i know that what's going on right now though just isn't working at least it isn't it isn't in my opinion and again i'm out here in the midwest the cost of living here is probably the best in the entire country because of how poor our area is <clears throat> and even out here man out of the stuff that i'm seeing with me personally, my, my every utility that I have, whether it be electric, internet, uh, you know, trash or rainwater management that the city has that I live in, every single utility has gone up. It's all it's all increased, and that also includes insurance. So every every utility has increased. The groceries have absolutely increased. I won't sit here and and tell you that you know I'm forced to pay something crazy like six or seven dollars per gallon of milk but but it's absolutely gone up anywhere between 50 cents to sometimes even a dollar 50 depending on what all's going on in the world you know everything's gone up as far as groceries are concerned but what bothers me more than anything about the topic of groceries and 
you know, things like supply and demand in general is the fact that in a lot of the grocery stores that I'm visiting here in Indiana, one thing I've noticed is that one week you'll go in there and buy something that you've bought in there a dozen times, and then the next week you'll go in there and it'll be sporadically discontinued. And that, to me, kills me. And I, I absolutely hate that because sometimes I'll find a product that I really love and I'll want to start buying it again and only to realize that it's nowhere to be found then at that point. And that's especially prolific in the automotive industry because what one thing I'm noticing, especially with me, given the fact that I have a truck and a car that's pushing 20 years of age now, is that it's getting harder and harder to find replacement parts for things. And it's not just for really old cars anymore either. It's getting to a point to where I think, personally, the big manufacturers are doing everything they can to tighten those those ropes more and more so that they can keep having market control over what their customers are buying. Now, the status, the, the standard rule of thumb is usually that whenever you buy a buy a new vehicle or something you can be assured that replacement parts will exist 10 years from the point of manufacture but in my opinion i think they're trying to to wind that down a little more or tighten that a little more by you know changing it to where it's more like nine or eight you know and, and each year it seems as if they try to produce less and less because the more they do that the more they can force you to have to buy something new <clears throat> Anyway, the reason I'm bringing all this stuff up is because, in my opinion, Trump's the guy that's more likely to try to find a way to fix stuff like that. Especially whenever you consider the fact that he's he's got people in his corner like like Elon Musk, Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., uh, Carrie Lake out there in Arizona, which, sadly, I, I doubt that she's going to wind up winning out there, but I hope she does because she's yet another kind of person that that seems to kind of look through a lens of what I look at, what I view as being more or less common sense. <clears throat> but you know, again, back to the main main point here is the fact that if any of you guys wind up seeing my videos and <clears throat> you know you hear me say that I'm a Trump slash MAGA supporter or something, I don't want you to feel unwelcome to, in case you're like a, a a Kamala supporter or a Democrat or you know just whatever. My uh, my little section of the internet is always going to be welcomed with people as long as they treat me with respect. So, I'm kind of I'm kind of kind of an old school uh, Democrat in a way, and by old school I mean like back in the early, well, late '80s, early '90s way. You know, back then when I felt like a lot of these weird nuances weren't always playing such a granular part in people's exchanges all the damn time. But yeah, I mean if. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, whatever, man. As long as you treat me res with respect, I will never, ever uh, treat you with, with disrespect. And I think we're all Americans, right? You know, I mean, I, I, that's the way I, I at least like to think of it as. I think we're all Americans, and no matter what happens, I think we should we should always try to have each other's backs because, you know, we're, we're each other's countrymen and countrywomen, and I think we need to have that kind of harmony with one another if we really want to make this country safe and secure and stable and worth having families in. So, okay. <laughs> anyway, I just I had to get that off my chest, man, because I I don't know, you know, with things going on in the world, it's it, I feel like sometimes you need to sometimes let people know those kinds of things. So anyway. Now, I wanted to play again today because I was thinking about the wall that I'm trying to make, that last wall, because I want to try to get it to a point where I can start working on those those slug turrets. <clears throat> and the reason I'm so eager about getting that done is because I want to get those freaking parts that you need to have in order to make those, uh, those waste pack uh, thingamajiggers. I can't remember what they call them. It's... it's like the little building unit things that you build to get rid of those toxic waste packs. And you've got to have those if you plan on having uh, the mech rechargers. <clears throat> so that's what this episode's going to be about. Just like <laughs> every other episode really is. Just keep, keep plugging along, you know. <clears throat> uh, let me see here. Where's a good place to start? I'm, right now, I'm looking to see if, if any of the animals have been 
stuck on those those things, those uh, caravan hitching spots, and it doesn't look like they have been. Now that we've removed the uh, stockpile zones, I, I had I think I had this trade beacon here because I was trying to sell some of the stuff that was in that zone. But kind of thinking maybe I should put one in here just to kind of leave leave it open for for an option if I ever want to try to sell anything that's in here. But see, the thing is that at some point I'm going to wind up changing this around anyway, so I don't know if I really want to do that. Do that or not. Hmm. I think I'm just going to deconstruct it for now. Okay. This is still muddy, so we've still got some time yet before going to be able to build on any of this out here. I wish those freaking things didn't take so long to extract water. Any animals out here worth training? Doesn't look like it. Okay, let me see here. So, where can we start? So, we've got a planner tool out. One thing that's easy to kind of plan out is the first nine pieces. So, we've got nine right there, we've got nine right here. So, we'll go ahead and build that at least. Two, three, three fives. See, I forgot that the auto doors. Oh, see here. See that? Okay, so how does that scan? <laughs> that thing's acting like it needs to be connected to power, but yet she was clearly able to use it. I don't. It's, this game drives me mad sometimes, man. Oh well, forget about it for now. Uh, okay, so after the fives, we got. Okay. 
kind of wonder too if I should start in on the first segment over here in terms of like building some, building the usable rooms and stuff. The thing though is that I'm not exactly sure how to go about doing that just yet. I haven't made up my mind in terms of like a design and stuff, you know. But I kind of like where this is going and the reason I do is because first of all, this solar power array or solar solar panel array <clears throat> This stuff, I'm going to leave unroofed or open, open air, you know? I mean, obviously you have to. But in a way, I'm kind of happy that it's protected or going to be protected by this stuff over here because that's obviously a power source and you don't, wanna, you don't want something bad to happen to your power sources. I was looking at this though just now and it looks almost as if this should be further up. Same with this. If, should I do it? So if I if I deconstruct all of these, I'm gonna have to restack them. But there's a slim chance that I might be able to get one or two more in squeezed into here if I do that. Because if you look, this one has obviously some space right here, but over here. There's a little bit of space for like right here for this one. I'm kind of wondering though why I did that. I don't know why I did that. So if I move that one up, then that means that this one will move up, 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 up. And I and it just kind of makes me wonder how many I, I might be able to. Oh, I bet it's because of that. Well, is it? Okay, I think I know what's happened here. So, if I do this, okay, so what I tried to do whenever I was laying these out is stack them one after the other. And I think what happened was I got to here after what I must have done by stacking them like that from here. And I guess maybe I've reached a point where I was like, well, I can't put any more right there. So I, I'm betting that's why that space is there. It's kind of like an oddball space, similar to what happened over here, I bet. And as, as well as with some of these bridge work things. So I think I'll, I guess I'll just go ahead and leave it. It's not like it's a big deal. But anyway, uh, these solar panels though, they're gonna be protected by all of this stuff in here. and the wall and everything else and that's kind of a good thing because I don't want something to happen to all that but with that being said though I was watching some stuff on YouTube <clears throat> of other people that try to create like a self-sustaining type of environment and <clears throat> and one of the approaches that they always took was to always get in the business of breeding these uh, boomalopes because with boomalopes you get the kim, kim fuel and with kim fuel, you can use this kim fuel powered generator. So, in other words, what I'm getting at is whether or not I would really need these if I went all in on boomalopes. <clears throat> like, for example, the uh, the muffalos. I don't know if I necessarily would have to have any of those. And hypothetically speaking, if I swapped those out for uh, boomalopes, I could probably double the amount of kim fuel that I'm able to have and just go all in on kim fuel generators because these things output 1000 watts regardless of rain or shine. These things, I don't know what these things output, but I, I'm sure it's not that as much as that. I don't think it would be in any way look like it says you would think some I think it'd say that on here at least like what the max output might be <clears throat> I don't think it's a thousand though in any event because I'm I can tell you right now that it's not as much as these these things are awesome but unfortunately I've I think I've used all of the 
all of the uh, vents that the map tile that I'm on has. So I don't think I can place any more of those. The one thing that bothers me, though, is that whenever you have these solar flares flare up, it's... I hate how, regardless of whatever power source you have, even with batteries, all of your, your stuff just kind of goes out. I hate that. Because even with solar, fl solar flares on Earth, even the worst ones, I think you'd still be able to generate power if you had something like a Gimfuel generator. Because, I mean, if you liken that to something like a, like a coal... Coal, uh, coal furnace or something, you'd still be able to have some level of power, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I, I know that solar flares screw with circuitry, but I, I don't know how much circuitry you'd be looking at if you're talking about something antiquated, like a steam-based steam type of generator. I don't know if a solar flare would screw that up or not. I wouldn't think it would. Maybe we can finally get our mail. Female. Ah, uh, dang it. Both females. We'll try to tame them anyway. How old are they? 176. I don't know what what's considered old in Thrumbo years, but even if I can just have more females, they're, they're still great at hauling things like rocks and stuff. I'd love to raise them though because you can get some pretty awesome cashola for them. Try to speed things up a little bit. Oh god, here we go. What the fuck was that noise? What was that noise, man? That did not sound good. Did you hear that squishy noise? I don't know what that was. It's kind of making me wig out. somebody puking or something. Oh man, I don't know, I'm not liking this. Well, there is some... There's some vomit there. 
She's sick. is that somebody got killed, but I'd, I'd like to think that if somebody got killed, I'd be seeing it over here. Or even, you know, I, I mean, maybe even with the... I think I'd probably see something, too, if there was something where an animal got killed, too, but, but see, I don't even have anybody in here, so I guess it's nothing to worry about. Alright, we've got to take care of this, though. See, see how the the game does that? It was a conduit fire, fire, right? I mean, I don't know if that's really what started it. I'm assuming that's what it is. Well, yeah, see, right over here, a fault in electrical conduit. So, yet here we go again, where I loaded up the game, and there's a conduit explosion. I'm telling you, man, there's something in this game that's been hard coded to to do that. I I I can't make heads or tails out of it, but I know that it's a problem. really irritating. Okay, let's get everybody on it. This is such a pain in the ass, man. Yeah, I'm thinking we should be able to get by with just that. Looks like we lost about five batteries. The good news though is that we've got plenty of supplies to be able to take care of it, so I'm not really, really too worried about it. Of course with the stupid cold snap combined with a solar flare, that doesn't really help things. I mean yeah, think about that for a second. A solar flare, cold snap, Conduit explosion. I mean, I like a challenge. <laughs> this as much as anybody else does, but... Let's be at least a little proportional here. Ooh, looks like we got a thrombo. Kick okay, ass, man. Just wish we could get a friggin' mail, man. Jeez. said that the solar flare was ending. Life is never easy on the rim. You guys were okay with the occasional political tangent. I try not to really get on on that type of topic very often because I know it, you know, it's always it can always be a controversial type of subject matter. I just don't want to. I don't. I don't want anybody to kind of, you know, think that if I support a certain candidate or something that they're not like welcomed on my channel or anything. I. And I, I, I'm not saying that. I want to. I want to place an emphasis on the fact too that nobody's made me think that. You know, I, I welcome anybody who wants to talk about politics and stuff. I, I don't mind that at all. But for anybody who might be new to my channel, though, or something like that, I don't want anybody to to kind of think anything. Because and the reason I feel like that needs to be said is because I've seen too many instances where, <clears throat> at least from the standpoint of MAGA supporters. 
I mean, it's it just seems so easy to marginalize them for some reason, and I don't I don't like that, man. Shit. And I'm sure it goes the other way too, oftentimes, where you've got, you know, Kamala supporters or something being treated like shit too. So I mean, I know it goes both ways. I think I'm gonna try to chase this dude. So I know that if I don't, he'll come back. I'm happy we're at a point, though, with this where usually these kinds of things aren't really a whole lot to panic about. Because early on in the game, man, if something like that would have happened, I would have been blowing a gasket. Now, that's kind of one thing that worries me. Because once I get to a point where I start summoning those damn mechanoid things to get those parts for the stuff that I'm wanting, the one thing about this whole design of my base is that I, I don't know... I, I don't have a solid plan yet to cover scenarios where they just bust through one of these rooms or something from, from the sky. I don't know what I'm going to do about that, and that's one reason I'm kind of stocking up, or at least I have a few of those EMP launchers, because I feel like that's going to be the only way that I'm going to be able to kind of deal with that. But I haven't really... Thought thoroughly about how I'll, I'll handle that though too. So I mean, there's chances are there's probably better ways. Like for example, when the time comes to get ready for that kind of stuff, I can probably set up a few of those EMP uh, landmine things or whatever they are, the traps, in strategic points and kind of work around stuff like that. Okay, this thrombo. Set her to. I think it's outside perimeter. Outside perimeter and Mr. Or Mrs. Rhino here. And she set the outside perimeter to. Okay. Kind of silly thinking about a rhino walking through your kitchen. Male thrombos must really be difficult to train or tame. With me, it's... With me, I've managed to get to a point where it's not like a problem with the females, but with the males, it always seems to be an issue. What are these people out here for? through, I guess. What's that? Oh, a duck. Okay, so the ducks, I guess, are... I think we need to put them in here now.
Still kind of cold outside, though. Still dealing with that cold snap, I guess. You do this. Hold on a sec. I need to cough. There we go. I didn't realize that I have these components just kind of sitting out here. So that's three fives, four, four, three, three, four, three, three. What's after the four, four, three, three, though? Four, four. It'd be so much easier to just load up a freaking module. <laughs> I just can't stand using mods though, man. I don't know why I'm like that. I guess I'm a little bit of a purist. That's kind of stupid, I know. But one of the reasons that I'm kind of like that is because I just don't like... I don't like those instances where you've got a mod that you really love, you know, everything's going hunky-dory, and then suddenly one day, out of nowhere, the developers or the maintainers of the mod say, Oh, fuck this. Then you're just kind of left up shit hill. Or Shit Creek, I should say, without a paddle. I don't like those types of situations. Because I, I run into that a lot uh, with the website software I use. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how familiar any of my viewers might be, but I I develop a, a lot of websites with Drupal. And sadly, with Drupal, it's, a, it's, like, it's basically a content management system that you use to make websites with. <laughs> And like computer games and stuff, you can load up mods to enhance certain kinds of functionality. And there's been times in the past when I would have extensive use of a certain mod, and then suddenly the maintainer would just kind of abandon it. And then that kind of leaves you in a little bit of a rut. And that's not, you know, goes without saying that that's not really the fault of the, of the mod maintainers necessarily, but because after all, they, they do that kind of stuff essentially out of the kindness of their heart you know they volunteer their time and, and i get that but for certain kinds of mods and stuff you would like to see stuff like that get into the core product and it just kind of sucks when it's not and that's the reason i always try to stay away from mods with this game uh should i get rid of this Look at all this. 
That's something else I keep meaning to come back to. With how my, my fields and stuff have been designed here. Let's see here. A couple more lights. sucks. Everything aside, though, I hope you guys are having a good Sunday, man. Good Sunday, good weekend. Hope you've had some good food. I, I made a hell of a lot of sushi last night. I wasn't able to eat it all, so I put a few of the maki bits in the uh, refrigerator. I tried to eat it today, and unfortunately, it, you know, when you when you talk about rice, it just doesn't refrigerate very well. It gets hard and stuff, so I thought to myself... Well, I kind of forgot about that. I was thinking maybe I can, like, I don't know, do something creative where I put, like, a wet paper towel inside of a bowl that has water in it, warm it up, and then, like, put the paper towel, um, damn it, put the, uh, put the paper towel kind of underneath the sushi in a creative way to where the, the wet paper towel doesn't touch the sushi but the steam from the, the hot and wet paper towel would like kind of soften the rice unfortunately that just did not work I mean it, it, it nothing got gross or anything or at least no grosser than it ordered it kind of was but what I had to do though is just kind of say screw it and pick through the uh through the rolls to get to the fish and just eat the fish like it was ceviche or something. It was still pretty good. But I think my eyes got bigger than my stomach whenever I was making everything last night. been in this situation before where I thought I had everything cut and only to see it come back up so I'm hoping that I got everything mm. this is warg number two she's gonna last much longer let's call them two it's her master. I don't think it's really a lot that can be done. One thing I, I cannot stand about this game is the fact that there's it doesn't seem to have much of a of like a what, 
what am I trying to say here? A water gameplay, you know? Like, where's all the boats? Where's the fishing? Where's, you know, stuff like that? You would think that they would have something like that. I mean, you can make spaceships, but you can't make a freaking boat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm again, I'm sure there's mods out there to take care of that, but blah, blah, blah. Only 180. These guys don't have anything here. Guess we could sell some clothes, though. I should probably sell those gun links. I mean, I never really use them. I guess that's the reason I hang on to them, though, because I keep thinking to myself, maybe they might come in handy at some point. Some cloth, I guess. Got to reassign those people that I had to assign through that fire. One thing I always try to do is make sure that nobody uses drugs in my colony. And the, the biggest reason that I do that is just because whenever they start getting addictions and stuff, it causes a lot of problems. Oh, man. I wish I didn't have to go to work tomorrow. Just stay home and play this. Great. Good news, though, is that I've got a pretty big vacation coming up. I always take a vacation once a year. Usually winds up being about a month long. It's around Christmas. So what I try to do is I, I try to line it up against the standard week that we get take, that we take off for Christmas. And then either before or after that, I try to schedule time like a week or whatever before or after, or sometimes both. It kind of increases the amount of time I get off. This year is going to be about a month. It's going to be awesome. I'd be so happy to get away from that damn place for a while. <sighs> And that's one of the good things about my job, man. Despite the fact that I sometimes rail against it on here, it, it's, it's definitely got its pros. Uh, let me see here. What am I doing? Let's see, let me see, let me see. Let's see here. It's basically September slash October. As soon as we put the animals in, I'm going to try to take care of some of these things. The gates and stuff. So I guess we got peace of mind out. That's good. Go ahead and get the rest of it mined up here.
thing I'm looking forward to here for too long too and I think it's in like a week or two is Yellowstone starting back up I don't know if any of my viewers watch that show I, I love that show I like most of well actually I'd say I like actually all of Sheridan's shows just about all of his movies too I think or, or at least a few of them. I, that um, Wind River movie, which I think he directed, that was one hell of a movie, man. But uh, Lioness, that show, that's a pretty good show, and they're gonna they're gonna come out with another season of that too here before too long. Actually, I think it might actually have just released, if I'm not mistaken. But Lioness, uh, Yellowstone. The 1883 and 1923 shows. I love those shows. I watched 1923 like all the time. I've <laughs> I've got I've got a lot of these shows on, on my my hard drives and stuff, and I always watch them every once in a while. Uh, I think he's gonna wind up having another Yellowstone spinoff type of show. Uh, I think it's like 1945 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And he's also coming out with a, a 2025 or 6 or something. And then, as if that's not enough, he also has this other one where it's like about some sort of Texas oil, uh, oil, uh, I don't know, oil person, oil business. <laughs> I don't see how that guy rests. I watched it. I, I don't think it was an interview, but it was like a it, something. It's like a news article or something about the guy. And he said one reason that he does so many shows is because he's trying to pay off that 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 big ranch that he now owns. I can't. I can't even imagine how much money that must have spent. Because he's got. I think if I remember right, he's got like a massive ranch someplace down in Texas. That I even think he's starting to use for some of his shows. Because I thought at one point they were going to try to use some of that land that he has for filming this next part of the of the Yellowstone stuff. And there was talk at one point about creating spinoff for the the Four Sixes. Which, if any of you don't know anything about Yellowstone, there's it's basically a show about a bunch of ranches, more or less. And one of the ranches is the Four Sixes that's down in Texas in the in that show and they were gonna at one point make a spin-off on that but I don't know if they're still doing that or not um it's okay so we've got oh that's one that we haven't taken yet the reason I was looking is because I th I, I can't I don't think we put I don't think we gave that last thrumbo that we just tamed a sleeping spot. This isn't good. That's not good at all. from our that that right there is what I was trying my best to avoid
Hopefully they... Okay, they... She's apparently incapable of putting out fires. That's great. <laughs> That's the one thing about boomlopes I cannot stand. It's whenever they start that shit, man. supposed to do in a for her to just start in on that. Actually, let's, let's uh, this is so frustrating. Let's get that, get that one, then get that one, and then get that one. There we go. Here if the car's already there. Yes. The reason I did, did that is because last time I tried something like that, she wound up trapping herself in there. worried that it might not be sealed like right here or something, but I think we're good. Now, we'll go ahead and deconstruct that. See, that will no longer be a problem once I get this defense system and stuff arranged the way that I've got it set up in my mind. Cougar meat. Ooh, we got some jade. Let's 
still amazed at the idea that I haven't been... I haven't had any run-ins with insects. With all the mining and stuff that I've had to do. It's really surprising. Dang it. Looks like we got to take care of that. It sucks that there's like a deep water thing right there. It's right in the middle of... And it's weird because there's like a little teeny tiny amount of land that goes across it. one thing that happens a lot with my colony I don't really understand it but every once in a while like you'll see people get into little fist fights and stuff <laughs> I don't know what that means I because I mean I'm not really seeing anybody over here like acting like they're having a fit or anything so I don't I don't get it it must be kind of a normal thing I guess Stupid woman. 
interesting. Links are the variants of cataphract armor. A shoulder mounted flame bolt launcher. Twelve thousand, jeez. Leader of blah 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 recently rescued five Imperials from a jail. He wants you to guard them until he can send a shuttle to collect them in eighteen days. He must keep the keep the mood of the Imperials above forty. If there was something something else in here. I would actually probably do that, but none of this stuff is really the stuff that I feel like I need, you know? So no, I'm not doing that. That's that's a problem too. Forgot that you can't put bridges on the deep water. So what are we gonna do there? Shit. Um Just build around it, you know. It's really the only thing that you can do. I was gonna say if I could at least make a structure like a bridge across that, and then build wood, wood or whatever, or like a wooden wall on top of that, that'd be kind of a cool room. Cause then you, <laughs> it'd be like a nature room, you know, or like a nature themed room. Modern. side perimeter. She needs to be I think I think it's outside perimeter that I had these guys set to if I'm not mistaken. Guess that's what we'll do then. Yes. Yeah, perimeter. All rescue. I wish you had more control over how this stuff is displayed. It irritates the hell out of me. Like, I should be able to, like, group everything based on species, you know? And then, like, maybe have a secondary type of sort that could then 
sort by age or maybe by by gender or whatever sex nice there's a mod for that Mud, man. Oh, and another another show that I watch a lot too is Tulsa King with uh, Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. It's actually pretty good too. If you haven't watched that, I'd encourage you to give it a shot. It's kind of funny watching S Sylvester Stallone in that type of role. <laughs> I mean, he he does a pretty good job on it. Admit, man, this wall's coming along quicker than what I was expecting it to. Just need to figure out what we're going to do about this and about this thing. Because I'm still not sure what I want to do about that, man. I'd, I'd love to move it in, indoors somehow, but I don't. The only way that I can make something like that happen is if I make it part of the part of the new space stuff. to build a new one outside of the wall. Which I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. I've got some ideas that I'm floating around here. I can think it over for a few. Meantime, let's see if we can't move this. What's the, what's the thing with those? Nine by nine. Let's 
Let's just tearing it up. One thing I'm kind of considering. So, like we said last time, we were going to kind of make each gateway section some sort of, like, rec room piece. And I think it might make us make some sense to put some utilities on each, each side of those. So, like, maybe we could split it up into, like, like on this... Like, up here in this section could be a refrigerator type of room sort of thing. And on, on this other side, doing the same thing. That way you would have no less than two butcher spots and, and a refrigerator type of situation at each gateway in, uh, section. I don't know if that makes sense or not. <laughs> it's... I'm, pro I'm probably rambling, but I'm kind of thinking out loud here, and I know that whenever I think out loud, sometimes my ideas don't really con get conveyed as well as I want them to. <laughs> kind of like a big brain fart. How many people do I have, though? That's one thing I meant to look at last time, and I forgot to. 41 colonists. All right, what do we got here? First of all, let's get the important stuff out of the way. Let's get components. Ooh, 24. That's not bad. Components. Okay. Um, See, they always want to sell me limestone, but they never want to buy it from me. Glass steel really needs more of that. Go ahead and take the wood, too. Let's see here what else we got. I guess. Um. Okay, to offload some of these textiles. Let's get rid of the bear. this though unless it's useful for something stored and used as food by oversized insects I mean that's interesting jelly stored and used as food by oversized insects does this imply then that you can tame insects We 
need to get rid of some of these bulls. I'll keep the newborn, but I'm gonna get rid of Oh, these are to sell me. Okay, never mind. I guess I can get rid of some more cloth. Again, we've got plenty of buffalo to get rid of, too. Let me go ahead and get rid of about some of that. Actually, we'll make it 2,000. Fifty-three. Okay. All right, there we go. I'm not missing anything. I one time in a different save game raised Ibex does and those freaking things, man, they they mate more than rabbits. At least they did with me when when I when I did it. Savannah, huh? Hmm. I mean, in Savannah. Well, I kind of assume that they were already married. It's not, though. Look at all these freaking people around here, man. This is insane.
gas on this. Coming along, man. It's all good. Sweet, man, sweet. I don't understand, though, why this freaking metal hasn't been pulled. I mean, if I was patient, I could get this water right here dried up to the point where I could finally build with this, but I just don't want to wait that long. I can get by with wood from these little sections. It's just this deep water that I don't like, because that's going to force me to have to build around it.
behind some hand wrap. Actually, that didn't take as long as I was expecting it to. just looks so stupid to have, you know, plasteel wall up to here, wood, and then continued plasteel wall. That suck. Look at all the blocks that we have, man. This is insane. What am I going to do with all this? I want to sell them, but nobody ever wants to buy them. <laughs> Damn things. It's like... Got way too much block, man. And that's one reason I considered at first to just build this, you know, last wall in something like Slate, but the benefits of having Plasteel just kind of outweigh way that In all honesty, man, I'm actually kind of surprised that my batteries are still full. I keep expecting these moisture pumps to suck those dry, but so far they're holding up. Pretty happy about that, because that tells me that my power sources are still on point. Plugging right along, man. Plugging right along. September, or, or should I say September? September. It's kind of hard to pronounce. September. Whoa, 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 
Just do. Three, two, three. Three, two, three. Yeah, I think there's a bunch of twos coming up here. Like 15 of them or something like that. It's going to be winter now. I think it's time to put the, the animals up, so... Horses and cows, I think. Oh yeah, I haven't saved it in a while. It's kind of pissing me off.
Look at all that chem fuel, man. Well, it's not pleasant enough over here. Where are those? Big amount. It's up here. All over the place up here. Around there, too. Man, I can't wait to get those bots. Those, those mechs. They're going to help out so much. Exotic goods. Go on, man. Definitely need to get in get in on that. Stuff, I guess. Furry tail. Cold tolerant cat ears. Boy, you'd be a freak. I never really did the gene pack stuff, man. I just never got into it for some reason. I don't know why. Seems like something that could be pretty damn useful, though. Elephant tusk. Actually, you know what? Let's gold tooth. Lower the cost a little bit. That's the Um, let me see here. There's I wanna do that thing with the thrombo. And what number are we up to now? It's this is Thrumbo 4. Is that right? Yeah, this is Thrumbo 4. There we go. Alright, man. Okay. Guys, I think I'm gonna stop the episode here. Do a save ski -poo. I don't know when I'm going to make another episode, man, because just like I always say each week, every every week has something new to deal with, you know. 
I swear to God, every single day, whenever I get home, man, it's hard to even play games because I'm just so tired and just want to zone off. But whenever I do wind up making another episode, I'm going to try to shoot to have the wall done. Or at least come pretty damn close because we're, we're kind of getting there, man. I mean, just look at it. And as soon as I get this thing done, it's going to be balls to the walls with these damn slug turrets on the outside and I would I would love to see anyone try to penetrate my defenses then at that point it's gonna be so fun to watch <laughs> oh man out of curiosity who's the closest bad guy that we could go raid I'm trying to man, it's pretty far away isn't it it's probably these guys right here no, I can't even that. I don't know what the fuck. I don't even pronounce something like that. Oshish, I guess. There's Oshish and Soseth. Oshish and Soseth. Say that ten times fast. So, the reason I was kind of curious about that is because it'd be kind of cool to pick some fights with people, but man, kind of a It's not a very populated planet, really. Which, I, I mean, that's... I I made it by design like that. You know, I I had another colony on this game that I was playing. It's still saved. I've, I mention it sometimes. That I, it's the Nation of Wolves colony that I made a long time ago. And it was on a densely populated planet. And I was getting raided, like, every day. That shit sucked. And that's the reason that I've kind of trained myself to have impenetrable defenses like this because I, I kind of got some PS, PTSD from that, that colony so anyway but whenever I come back man that's going to be num numero uno is just getting the damn wall built getting it done and on the outside of that starting in on those defenses so it'll probably be like Monday or Tuesday as long as everything goes somewhat okay for my week I mean with the place that I work at man you just never know what's going to happen so Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, let me say this one more time to make sure that's absolutely saved, and it is, okay. And I will see you when I see you. Have a good week. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. And I'll see you when I see you. Later.